Hello, hello! Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XI. Uh, so last time I showed you the assaults. Haven't been able to do any more of those yet. Although I did, it did help me decide on the next direction of my Let's Play after we finished the Chains of Promathia missions. We're on Chapter 3 of Chains of Promathia, because last year before I got into Rise of the Zillart, I did the beginning missions. Of Promathia. You might remember me going to the Promivians in each of the teleport crags and then being sent to the Tevnasian Archipelago. We're on the road Forks, and uh, it's like we have to go and talk to people in Windurst and Sandioria, and should also be somewhere in Bastok we gotta talk to people. I know we ran out of Sid several times doing WSMs. But, uh, way back in one of my videos before I finished Rise of the Zillart last year, I zoned into Northern Sandioria and got, like, a short cut scene where, like, we watched, like, a little, like, overture happen and, like, someone walk in the city from, I think it was Prish, maybe, or maybe Almia. I think it was Almia. We could look for, like, the goblin or the bard that would replay the cutscene for us, but it's such a short cutscene anyway, and since we know, like, since I can describe it in, like, one sentence, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think it's really that important. But this video is going to be, you know, more or less just story, 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 and there's going to be some fights and things in between the story, I believe. Um, I don't know how far we'll get, uh, just going on in, but, uh, talk... We're supposed to go to the cathedral at the far end of the main hall and talk to someone named Arnau. And, uh... He's probably going to tell us about Altana, since it's the cathedral and whatnot. Have you lost your way on the path of life? Come, listen to our sermon. Let us be your guide to the light of paradise. What is this? You wish to know of the multinational expedition and its search for the Gate of the Gods? This is quite odd. Not but a few moments ago, another came asking the same questions. I believe her name was Almia. Be she an acquaintance of yours? Hell yeah, she's a hottie. She's a hot redhead. And I would take her to bed. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what happens if you say no. The uh, guide I'm following doesn't say. Skew all desire and embrace Altana. Only then will she bless you in her glory. That is all for today's sermon. May paradise open its gates to you. I am grateful to have been given the opportunity to, to hear your sermon. However, there are still many things I do not understand. Would you be so kind as to spare a few moments to answer my questions? Of course, my child. What is it you wish to know? When I was young, I often heard the stories of Paradise. A legendary land where the gods slumber. A gate leading to that land, discovered by the ancients. However, according to the stories I heard, the ancients angered the Twilight God by attempting to open the Forbidden Gate. As punishment, he cast a terrible curse upon them all. If this hideous tale is true, then why is the Sandiorian Cathedral attempting to convince people that we should open the gates? Or has the Cathedral discovered a method to soothe the wrath of the gods? Oh damn, he probably doesn't like that at all. I must assume that you are not of our kingdom. That is correct. I was born in the Marquisate of Tafnasia and baptized by the Tafnasian Cathedral. Our church, too, teaches of the gates of the gods, the gates of paradise. However, we are told it is a line that children of Anadiel have been forbidden to cross, the exact opposite of what the Sandiorian Cathedral teaches. For the, pa for the past 20 years, we have searched tirelessly for an entrance to paradise, and it is during that search we realize that the only path to soothing the Twilight God's wrath is to eschew all desire and embrace Altana. 
That that doesn't really seem like it would do much, man. Hm. Inquire with the high priests, huh? Well, he kept pretty civil, even though you could tell that he was getting pissed. Look at the balls on Almia. She's just walking in here, fucking laying them on the table like, Oh yeah, you know what? Your beliefs are fucking wrong. You're like, here's the polar opposite of your belief, homie. And, uh... Talk to Chesalvige in the manuscript room. Off to the left side as you enter the cathedral. Okay, it's one of the dudes in the uh, curse-breaking room. Bearded chap. Welcome, travelers. Even after listening to the Vikask's sermon, Vikask, Vikask. I don't know how to. I don't know that word. I'm gonna have to look that word up. Uh, questions? Yeah, you have all the answers, don't you, holy dude? Yeah, get to quenching, bitch. I like all Mia's shoes. This is the Cathedral of the Reliquary. It was built in the remembrance of one of our former Papsks. Mochavat P. Kochire or Kochire? Like, I'm pretty sure the T is silent. I don't know how to say this French ass name, so. Words are hard, man. During his papacy, the Papsk devoted himself to healing the wounds in the hearts of men, wounds left by the flames of war. The Dawn Goddess watched over him and his work and blessed him with her glory. However, that is not all she gave him. Before his passing, Altana showed the Papsk the path to paradise. I'll talk about an alliterative sentence. The path to paradise? Yes, his final words told us that to obtain paradise, one must eschew all desire and embrace the Dawn Goddess. For many years, we believed that the path to paradise and gates guarding it were things that actually existed on Vanadiel. Oh, spoiler alert, dude. We did rise to the Zill alert. They are. The cathedral scoured through the ancient tomes and documents in our vaults and went to war with other nations. I have heard that Sandioria even attacked the Tavnasian Cathedral, all to find a paradise that was only meant to exist in our hearts. Instilling fear to find a land where mankind could live without fear, this paradox ultimately put distance between us and Altana. Excuse me. But thanks to the teachings of Muchavat, we have realized the error of our ways and thus made it our mission to enlighten our brothers and sisters regarding the true path to paradise. Do you understand? Yes, I believe I do. However, I have one last question. How are we to break free from the curse of the Twilight God? That is... It is forbidden to speak of the Abhorrent One. Of all things, you should know this well, child of Zemnasia. Travelers, you need not worry. It is our duty to serve Altana and, and introduce her blessed light to the unfortunate masses. If we follow the teachings of the Dawn Goddess and do not stray from the path of righteousness, the chains of evil will be broken and the gates of paradise will open. Yes, I see now. Thank you very much for your kindness in explaining this all to us. No, you need not thank me. I am simply pleased to know that you now understand the truth behind paradise. Wait... You said that you seek the royal knight Frank Maj M. Mistal, did you not? If I am not mistaken, I recall a section of Jugner Forest known as Carpenter's Landing being owned by the knights Mistal. I do not believe you will be able to reach the manor, but you may find some of his hands by the water collecting firewood. Hmm, sounds shady. Alright, so now we gotta go to Carpenter's Landing. Via the E6 entrance in Jugner Forest. Okay, so I guess we gotta go to Jugner. I guess we take the book. The book warp would be good. Um, hmm. Shouldn't be that hard. Or bad. Or anything. Uh, hmm. 
Oh yeah, last time I was actually able to complete the rock-breaking assault that you saw me fail. Um, excavation duty, I was able to beat it. Uh, basically, instead of breaking two walls myself and then killing Kikirin, I just killed Kikirin after breaking the first wall. And uh, I went up I went up the bridge with the bombs on it first to that one that's by itself and where I thought the rune of release was going to spawn. I blew that one up first, and then I went back to the other side, and basically I, I had to kill basically two care currents per, per mine, but thanks to my martial analyst and my merits, I was able to do like 3,000 damage savage blades with today's TP workings and my strength merits and setups and stuff, and was able to kill them fast enough, and I finished. I broke all the walls with five minutes remaining. And from the farthest wall, back to the Rune of Release, that's near the start, um, it's like a three minute run. So I had two minutes left when I actually activated the Rune of Release. So we're 15 out of 25 towards uh, towards uh, getting our first mercenary rank up. And I also found some interesting stuff out. The Nizal Isle investigation actually does count towards promotion, so we can probably... it's possible to solo that, so... said E6, so it's the simple land... simple one. We could, we could mount up if we want to. In the interest of saving time, I will. Also, one of my friends told me something neat about the Iron Giant. I might have shown this off before, but if you go into first person, something neat happens. Oh, you just, you like you got these fires, I guess. I guess that's kind of cool. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty done with the mount music in this game, though. I wish there was a way to disable it without disabling all the music. Like, don't get me wrong, it's it's a nice little tune. It's just. I mean, like, Final Fantasy XIV has different mount music for almost every single mount. And I turn that off, too, because I'd rather hear the zone music or the ambient sounds in, in the area around me. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get off of it, because I don't think we'll be able to ride at Carpenter's Landing anyway. And we're almost there. Like, I don't I don't care. I, I'm, I am so tired of that. I'd rather hear the Chocobo music, for God's sakes. Hardly ever get to hear that nowadays. I mean, don't get me wrong, I am thankful for having mounts and all this quick travel. Uh, this this Let's Play probably would be, you know, only halfway to where it's at without all this quick travel options. But like, or I'd have to just structure it a lot better and do a lot more editing. I barely do editing, editing as it is, and my next upload that I'm actually, I'm like, I'm managing to keep about eight videos <laughs> Uh, ahead of my uploads as far as my recording versus when I actually upload a video goes. And uh, the one I have to upload next is actually... It broke into two parts because when I was started recording, I didn't realize my memory was full. And I could only record up to 24 minutes or something like that. And so it stopped. This recording just abruptly stopped at 24 minutes. And, like, important stuff happened to that 24 minutes. So I couldn't just delete stuff and you know start over I had to I have to stitch the videos together which is really easy to do it just means opening up Adobe Premiere which I hardly ever do which I should probably do more often let's see where do we need to go here look for an NPC called Gilloud or Gilo beside a boulder at H10 we're at F10 so we just need to go east basically I've always found Carpenter's Landing to be one of these very weird zones. Like, they call it Carpenter's Landing, and basically, I guess it's like the river downstream or whatever from Sandioria, and it's how they, like, ship lumber. It's supposed to be how they ship lumber to Sandioria or whatever. Like, there's a little boat you can take from the Carpenter's Guild in Sandioria to Carpenter's Landing. But, like, look at how the zone is. It's, like, all these, like, crazy spider webs and fungwars and stuff and beetles and shit. Like, 
I don't know. It, like, there's mushrooms everywhere. Like, it doesn't really seem... Like, it doesn't, to me, scream... Oh, yeah, this is where the Sandiorians get their lumber from. But, I mean, I guess it makes sense. It's near a waterway. It's near a, an old-growth forest. Like... That's whatever. Where is this guy? Oh, there he is. Okay. So... As you may have surmised from me saying it's shady, um, the holy man in the JRPG, who doesn't like what we're talking about, sent us here to get us killed. So uh, we can talk to this old guy and see what happens. Although, in all honesty, I don't think it's going to be that bad. We're level 75. And these are the quests that take place uh, before the level 40 cap is even lifted for, like, the areas of Chains of Chromathia. So, like, I'm guessing the level for this quest is somewhere between 40 and 50. You wish to know if the knights must all. You're just like everyone else, a maggot looking for a scandal. Well, it's time for me to squash another worm. Man, he tamed a Morble? That's kind of crazy. And this thing attacks fast. Uh, we're, we're such a high level, I don't think we need to put on our mind here. Let's just paralyze it. And, uh, I don't even think we actually need to. I just want to see it get paralyzed a lot. Unless it's somehow resistant, I guess. Maybe I should have put on my mind here. Okay, so anyway, bitch, what was that? What were you saying? How, how could you defeat... Come, strike me down. I am not afraid of death. There is nothing I could want more than to die in the service of my master. Stop this foolishness! Oh, he's got a purple mask. Sir Louverance! Maybe it's Louverance? I don't know. I'm just going to say Louverance. Do you truly feel your actions here today would please Count Frank Mage? Noble adventurer, please forgive this man. The Knights Mistal were once a proud family of knights until certain happenings within the kingdom left the Count's name scarred with disgrace. The family vowed revenge. However, without a target for that revenge, they were never able to prove their innocence, and their nobility was stripped from them. Sandioria is a country built upon honor. Thirty years have passed since ill fate befell the Knights Mistal, but the contempt towards the family remains. And now I'm just an old man. What answers have you come and searched for today? What do you wish to know of the Count? Now, see, that's actually really pretty. Like, why can't I see that for most of the zone? Ah, the multinational expedition to the Northlands. What were they searching for? I assume their purpose was to investigate the gates of paradise. Detailed information on the subject can more, likely, more than likely be found at the Sandy Orion Cathedral. However, even if they did exist, not even a marquee, let alone a count, could lay his eyes on the documents without direct permission from the Papsk. Though things were quite different when the cathedral was led by the former Papsk, Muchavat. Muchavat P. Kochere had strong ties with Count Kafal. While the Count passed away many years ago, his wife, Hinari, still lives alone in their manor in southern Sandioria. He's got, like, hecatomb boots, and... I don't think it's a hecatomb subligar, but it's one of the subligars that has... It might be, like, Darksteel subligar. And he's wearing a brigandine. And that's actually a dusk mask, I'm pretty sure. That he's got on that purple mask. Perhaps she knows something that may be of use to you. If you mention my name, she should be delighted to assist you. Take my words, adventurer, in exchange for the forgiveness of this old man's sins. Until we meet again. He's got a great sword. What a chad. Alrighty then. Excitement. Talk to the old man one more time. Okay. Uh, so now what? 
Overgrown Ivy has a very fast attack rate similar to 100 Fists. Overgrown Ivy will start to spam Bad Breath at 15% health remaining. Hey, you could use that monster to learn Bad Breath on Blue Mage if you... Technically. That's cool. It should be noted that at this point, all hate seems to be fairly meaningless, and she should be zerged down. Those at the general base level for this mission, level 40 or so, may wish to consider partying, perhaps even forming an alliance, or bringing a higher level help for fighting this notorious monster. Okay. After defeating Overgrown Ivy, talk to Gilode again. Next, hand to s head to Southern Sandioria. Uh, home point four is closest, and speak to Hinari on the second floor of the Count's Menor. Okay, we'll just, just warp on out of here, I guess, or... Yeah. I guess you, do, like, you can take boats around, that's how you get... Or maybe you can't take boats around, maybe you have to enter from a different entrance. Either way, this zone's kind of jank, and we come here a couple more times throughout Chains of Promathia, and it's jank every time, and you're barely here for any time at all. And, like, nope, no one ever came here to EXP or anything. Like, I'm sure there's some quests that involve this area that I don't, haven't ever done or, or know about or care about. It's just, like, one of the most, like, vestigial zones ever. And I think it technically counts as one of the new zones introduced by Chains of Promathia. Which is really, really weird, because all the other Chains of Promathia zones are all fucking iconic. And then Carpenter, then there's Carpenter's Landing. Which, I might be wrong, it might not be a Chains of Promathia zone, it might be part of the base game, but if it is, you know, I don't fucking know why. <laughs> I was actually thinking about trying to do an accent for this whole video, like some sort of Cockney or British or something, just to see if I could. But I don't know, there's so much reading to do, and I don't really know if I could keep an accent up for like a full hour. I've tried it before, haven't I? One of my let's plays. Hello, Gov. We're talking about this now. Sounds awful, is not it? Right as. Gotta talk to Henry at B6. I ain't near enough slang to keep going. This ends the Sandiorian leg. Man, those bagpipes are loud. Henry, Henry, tell me all the things, Henry. You say you met with Louverance. How was the young fellow? I see, he rarely visits anymore. I have been so worried. If anything were to happen to him, my late husband would be devastated. Hmm? The multinational expedition? Why, I have not heard that name for 30 years. Yes, I remember it like it was yesterday. Back then, my husband and I lived in a manor just outside the village of Laval. Though I think the area is called Devoy now. There was a monastery in the center of the village. When Mujavat, the Papsk at the time, visited the monastery, he would often stop by our residence. I recall His Holiness mentioning that the expedition was called to ascertain certain information brought forth by the Bastoken government. At the time, the Humes claimed that there was a powerful force of some sort hidden deep within the forbidden Northlands. Of course, the Paps could not fully believe the stories of those conniving Bastokers. However, it was my husband who suggested that this powerful force could be the Gates of Paradise. Oh, Sudden Almia! Dun, 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 dun. Do they know one another? Was us talking to the Louverance and getting attacked by a gigantic Morbol for basically nothing? Oh, yep, yep, they know each other. Hmm, how about that? Hmm, couldn't control yourself, eh? So Almia's in her 20s. According to Mildarian C. Gillome, you were a very special guest. <sighs> Traveling with the Cardinal, huh? 
Yes, I remember now. Was there not yet another young lady with you? <laughs> oh, it is so relieving to hear that another child of Anadiel has been blessed by the light of the Dawn Goddess. And both Muchavat and Mildarian were still with us. Lady Henry, would it be too much to ask you what you know of the gates? The reason I have traveled here from Timnasia is to inquire with the cathedral on the subject. The explanation given to the masses was more vague and misleading than any of my canticles. I've heard tales that the explanation was a message from Altana, given to the Papsk on his deathbed. However, I have also heard much to contradict this. Please, tell me if there is more to the story. Almia. Paradise is a beautiful place, a magnificent place with neither death nor fear. When my village was attacked by the orcs, the bloody hands of destiny ripped my husband away from me. The faith in paradise that the Paps instilled in me, that is what saved my life. You sing the words of the heart, Almia. You should know that truth is not what always saves us. But if it is only the thing but if it is the only thing that offers salvation, then there is nothing more important. Cardinal Mildarian told me that the courage to face the truth is what will ultimately save us. Cardinal said that? Very well. There is one thing that His Holiness mentioned when I visited him after he had fallen ill. I was forced to abandon the truth. Abandon the truth? The look on his face when he told me this was that of a man who was standing at the gates of the afterlife. I did not have the courage to ask him what he meant by his words. I cannot know if the truth which the Paps spoke of had any relation to the Gates of Paradise. However, it was not long after this meeting that the Cardinal Medarion revoked her own nobility and disappeared from the kingdom. Now that I think of it, this event may have some relation with Mujavat's words. The Cardinal revoked her nobility? When did this occur? Nearly twenty years ago, of course. I believe it was just a few days after the Orc's surprise attack on the Marquisette. Did you not know? No, I did not. I thought Cardinal Madarian was a victim of the assault. The last time I saw her, she was standing in Tamnasia as it crumbled and burned. It seems as if the Light of Altana has blessed the Cardinal as well. Lady Henry, do you know what happened to her where she headed after revoking her nobility? I did hear the Cathedral send a knight to investigate her whereabouts. That knight's name is Luverance. One of the direct descendants of the formal Knights Mistal. I say former because this family was stripped of its royalty years ago. It said that Luverance himself was once a member of the Royal Knights. Interesting. The plot thickens, and Luverance seems like he's going to be a key player. Abandon the truth. Is the truth connected in some way with the Gates of Paradise? Or could it be something else? Truth of the expedition, perhaps? But if it is true, why has she not returned to Somnasia? Has she forgotten about us? About me? This Conwin jerks back and forth because there's too much smoothing going on with my graphics card or whatever. Because kind of the breathing animation, the idle breathing animation of the chest to sort of jerk whenever you're looking at somebody. Or like moving. Yeah, just whenever you're looking at somebody. It's kind of funny. Uh, I wish I wish it wasn't so. I'm sure there's like third-party programs you can get out there that, that cause that to not be a thing. But whatever. Uh, we will we will find charming. We will find the jank charming. The, them's the rules. So now we gotta go to Windurst and do the Windurst Jin leg. It's going to be relatively similar, a lot of running around and cutscenes and whatnot. And I think we actually, back last year when I was doing this, we also got a cutscene in Windurst where we saw the Chibuki, those Taru Taru that stole our pendant from us for. Um, we saw like them run into Windurst or whatever, and I think they're looking for their dad or something. Something like that. And so we gotta go to Winter's Waters, head to the Rhinostery, Home Point 3, right hand room, 
Attack to Obiru Dobiru. Uh, did we get this partially when I was the first time I was fighting Fenrir? I think we might have. Unless I'm staking buildings, which I don't think I am. What do you think of my Red Mage lock style? You know, it uses the Red Mage hat, the Ochimusha Kote, the Dancer's cask or whatever, the Dancer's body, the Red Mage pants, and the Corsair boots. I feel like good lock styles in this game are kind of hard, because you can't, like, change the color on any of the gear. So if, like, you like how a piece looks, but you don't like the color, your choices are, like, to hope there's a palette-swapped version of it somewhere, or, like, to try to build your entire lock style around it. Or to just look like you're made out of a rainbow. <laughs> but honestly, I feel like Final Fantasy XI players are actually really bad at lock style. Like, they're not really good at coordinating outfits. They just wear old outfits they like. Or... Uh... Oh, he's in the other one. I thought it said left. No, oh, no, it said right hand room. I'm just stupid. But I think we might have already gotten this guy's, like, little spiel. Could be wrong. Okay, talk, talk to your Warren Oren, huh? Okay, yeah, sure, sure thing. I'll, I'll, I'll get right on that, getting you those star mite shells. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Totally. Go to Winter's Walls and talk to Yorn Orin in the house of D5. We might have actually gotten this already, too. The thing about these legs in Chains of Promathia is they're not actually sequential. Whenever you get to a chapter and there's like three different ways to go in a single chapter, you can go any on any leg of the path first. And then the chapter advances once you've done all three or all two or whatever. And this goes on like that until, like, I want to say until Chapter 6, and then everything sort of becomes straightforward and, and one path, and no more branching paths as far as I remember. Which, for the most part, as far as I'm aware, is dropped in all further expansions, even the ones that were made and written by the same team that did Chains of Promathia. Alright, Yorin Oren, lay it on me. Can I help? Oh god, it's the one with the speech impediment. Father! Dad, we missed you. Daddy, your beautiful children are here. What? What, Ethy? What is the meaning of this barging Ethy into people's homes? Why are you call Ethying me daddy? You probably didn't know it, father, but we were in mommy's mother's tummy when you were separated. In mommy's tummy! That's why we've been looking for you all this time. Looking for you, daddy. Why, Dr. Doodly Yoran Oran. Who would have thought you'd have such cute tootlin' kiddly winks? So many children, you devious creature. We must have the Taru Taru Times write up a feature. <laughs> oh ho ho, you men are all the same. Not one of you ever wants to take the blame. I'm pretty I'm I'm with you and Oren on this one. I don't think the Chibukis are related to him. I understand Ethy now. Yes, I did travel to Tabnasia once many years ago. But that was only for the purposes, Ethy, of appraising a rare discovery. Pirates, thieves, and all kinds of treasure hunters had brought Ethy unusual items from all over the world to Mark was at. Mark was eight? Mar Mark is eight? I don't, I don't know how to fucking say that word either. These items have been hidden, Ethy, in a chamber beneath the Tavnasian Sacrarium. I was led, Ethy, to that reliquarium only after agreeing, Ethy, to never speak of the objects I would see. When we entered the chamber, I was asked to look at a frightening Ethi statue that had been dug up from some goddess-forsaken labyrinth. 
frightening statue? W well, spring spillingly spill it, man. What kind of slap deadly statue was it? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. You were invited to the faraway land of Tamnasia, and you gave them a not sure. All I have to say is, what an amateur. An embarrassment to the ministers of Winders. An absolute Taru disgrace. You've gone and smeared mud on our collective face. And now hear these poor fatherless children's wailings. Is there no end to your dismal failings? My task was to discern where it had been excavated from analyzing the traces of the soil that still clung to its surface. And did you flang fig figure out where the soil was from? Of course I did. It was silt from the bottom of bottom ethy of the sea. It was from the Sea of Shumeo, I believe. The Sea of Shumeo? The inland nified north sea of north of Juno. Isn't that body of water non stoppingly notorious for ship sinking on even the calm, -y, calm balmiest of days? It is indeed Ethi. What's more, the statue is said to be found Ethi not in the sea, but deep Ethi within the earth. What a fascinating tale, I must conclude. And after unfurling this mystery, you were elated enough to start your own brood. <laughs> Santato would be like, You, you were fucking Yorin Orin. Yorin Orin fucks! And he's like, I do not fuck! Now, now the Chibukis are hungry. Oh dear. Go back to Winders Waters and go to Timber Tavern, Timber Timbers Tavern, and talk to Kiyomi Rome. You may be requested to talk to him twice too. The correct conversation will be a cutscene. Why me? My pristine Ethi image has been sullied. The Mimeo Mirror. His memory viewing powers are perfect for this situation. I'll use the mirror to show all my memories of Tamnasia. I'll prove my innocence to the world. Now if I can just remember the person who owned the Mimeo mirror. I seem to recall a rather unpleasant personage boasting about his possessions a while back. Calm yourself, Yorinorin. You're too work up, Ethi, to think straight. Yeah, I can't read his speech in Pediment every time, like, with, with as much as they sprinkled it into the, uh, the text there. I feel like how my dad felt trying to read me Redwall when I was a little kid. You get to... Brian Jacques wrote moles in, in, uh, you know, Redwall's about anthropomorphic mice people, and the, the mice and the moles and the voles and the shrews and the otters are the good guys, and the rats and the weasels and the stoats are the bad guys and all the moles have their own dialect slash uh, method of talking and <laughs> my dad trying to read it out loud nearly had a stroke <laughs> he basically uh, <laughs> he stopped reading his like man this character is retarded is mentally retarded I'm, I'm not gonna read this character's lines and, uh, I thought it was hilarious, because I didn't have any problem reading the moles, and I didn't understand why he was having a problem. Of course, I never had to read the moles out loud to anyone, so... There's that. And I'm sure that whenever they, uh, you know, when they, they put the speech impediment in for Yorin Orin, they didn't think someone was going to record this and read it out loud at length. So, you know, you know... Funny when you read it to yourself in your head. Okay, who was who are we supposed to talk to? That 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 one, that one. Munch munch chio chio. What's that? You have a question you want to ask me? The man on the spot. You want to know three Tartaro wearing strange clothing were here while I was stewing over my stew? 
I did see three Tartaro with appetites almost as big as mine, if that helps. Munch, munch, chew, chew. Ooh, I'm stuffed. I think I've gone up three belly sizes. I shouldn't have had that roasted rare rab. Well, I thought our number up was up when that humongous dragon got his claws into us. That big lizard left us without two gil to rub together. You know, I've been thinking. I don't think that guy was our father. Nah, not our dad. Nope, not our daddy. Our father would be someone with a lot more cash. Yeah, our mom had that huge gym after all. That lovely fur coat. Right then, let's go look for our real father. Ready or not, here we come, Dad! They're kind of jackasses, but like, their story's a little bit sad, because I'm pretty sure their mom died in childbirth, or e either she died in childbirth, or died when Tavnasia was attacked. So, you know, they were orphaned either way. Like, so like, it's kind of sad. But you can only feel so far, so far for them. Their, their, their hijinks are a little too much. Okay, so now then, go to the house of Hanoi Gamoy from the back entrance. In the southern half of Windurst Waters. Okay, so we'll go to 1.3, I guess. Oop. Too many places to teleport to instantly. Back entrance of Hamoy Gamoy. Door is marked Door Trader's Home at E7. Home point 3 is closest because it's the only home point in the southern section of Windurst Waters, duh. And so, yeah, I guess that's over there. Talk to him to receive the key item Cracked Mimeo Mirror. Return to Windurst Walls and speak to Yorn Orn again to learn the method for repairing the mirror. After speaking to Yorn Orin, the cracked Mimeo mirror will be removed from your inventory. Very well, very well. Thinking at this rate, we might get through one chapter of Chains of Promethea per recording I do for it, possibly. Some of the later chapters have some pretty long cutscenes, though, so it'll vary, I guess. We're at about 45 minutes in the recording. Or there, like, maybe maybe a minute or two shy. Um, dicks. But, uh, dicks, 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 dicks. Is this the back door? That's what she said? No. Uh, where, where are you? Hanoi Gamoy! Hey, is this that little fucker that makes the, the dolls? It's got the same robe. Okay, I guess not. What in the blazes are you three babbling about, Taru? Here they go again. Mommy's tummy! This is some riveting quest dialogue. Pulitzer or Bolts or Prize for the man on the spot. I wonder what Pulitzer or Bolts or Prize is in Japanese. It's gotta be some other writing publication. That's gotta be a localization choice. We're from Japanesia. Ah, great, we're gonna get interrupted by this tower tower that can't stop eating. I only ever met with the scoundrels in the Aterophonized Band. Hey, it's it's the fucking... The thief! The thief AF quest is showing up. 
Wow. How about that? I understood that reference. Hmm. Then another leader got himself executed. Because of my dealings with the Aterophanos band, the Cantonese Cathedral put out a warrant for my arrest. I had no time for dates or dilly-dallying. I'll have you thrown in jail for libel! Show me the proof that I'm your father. We don't have anything around here, Daddy. We have proof in Tamnasia, Dad. We don't have any money to get back there, Father. You don't have the money to take an airship? I'll give you as much as you need. Just get out of my house. Out! Yeah, these Jabukis are con artists. Alright. Mm -hmm. I'll sue the pants off that journalist if he writes anything incriminating. Oh, he's got a Mimeo mirror, huh? Okay. Well, we're gonna be the one winding up fixing it or getting him the stuff he needs to fix it or whatever, so we're gonna actually be the one responsible for fixing it, but you know, whatever. And that goes in our temporary key items. An unusual mirror owned by Hanoi Gamoy is said to reflect the memories of the person who gazes into its glassy surface. Or it would, if it weren't so badly cracked. The effect did he do to it, man? Maybe it breaks once it shows you your memories or something. So now we gotta go back to Yarnoran. And then we'll have to go for our first time to Ottawa Chasm. Oh snap. Aw oh, man, are we gonna have to climb Paradamoid Tour? That's gonna be such a pain in the dick. Ugh. That might take an hour in and of itself if I can't remember how to fucking climb the thing. I might have to look up how to do it. Ugh. I used to... when I Before I got the map to that place back in the day, I knew how to climb Paradmore Tour uh, almost with my eyes closed. But after I got any sort of map to it, I just kind of like forgot how to climb it. Almost completely. Not that the map really helps you climb it. It's just like... Map kind of... Having a map kind of gives you a sense of direction. And when I didn't have a sense of direction for the zone itself, I was better at climbing the hard-to-climb mountain where you just need to know the lay of the land. I guess maybe because I was having to internalize the entire lay of the entire zone. But once I had a map, I stopped. My brain was just like, okay, just use map. And I guess maybe I forgot, kind of forgot the way. But you'll see when we get there. I had a feeling this was where this was going to take us. An Argamoy entrusted you with the cracked Mimeo mirror, but this is no good if it's broken. No good, no good. Thinketh you are an Orin. Thinketh I have it. To fix the Mimeo mirror, we'll need a Mimeo feather formed from a Mimeo jewel. Better make that three of them. Adventurer, you must go to Ottawa Chasm and obtain yourself some Mimeo jewels. Then take them to the top, of, tippy top of Paradmore Tour to transform them into Mimeo feathers. Remember, I need three of them. It will take all your skills and more to accomplish this task. But I know you can do it. I need you to be able to do it. Okay, uh, do we talk to you again or something? Okay. Uh, where do we get the Mimeo jewels? Yeah, whatever. If I remember right, the hard part about this is not just climbing Pradmore Tour, but it's also... Um, you have to climb it in a certain time limit. Oh, look! Kieran's pull. We could have gotten that from Kieran when Vox killed him for us. It's not a very good staff, even with augments. Um, it's actually, like... Back in the day, its use was limited to like being a staff option for Monk and Dragoon and Paladin as like for damage dealing. And um, Monk, with the plus 10 mind on it, Monk used it for Chi Blast sets, I remember. 
But beyond that, its usefulness is very limited because of the elemental staves. Okay, so... We're gonna want to take the Book Warp, I think, to Maze of Shakrami. Uh, we could... We could... Warp to Tarangi Canyon. Because um, that's the path we want to take. But uh, I think Book Warp to Maze of Shakrami, if I have it, would be the way to go. And if we don't have it, I'll just, like, get the next closest one and go that way. It's not that hard to get to Ottawa Chasm. Of course, getting to Ottawa Chasm was, was never the hard part. Look at that little Taru Taru Paladin. I always thought Taru Taru Paladin was, like, oddly appropriate. I think it's cool Shushu, technically. See, the thing about Paladin is, especially back in the day, I'm sure it's still kind of true now, but they generate a lot of their enmity from their spells, like Flash and Cure 4. And so, like, your enmity management on Paladin for the longest time was only as good as your MP bar was full, or close to full, or, you know, capable of letting you cast your spells. Um, and so, like... All the other more physically inclined races with higher HP values, like yeah, they have more HP than Taru Taru. Congratulations. But you know, more HP once, right? The second they got hit hard enough to make it not matter, you know, to, to reduce their HP from the maximum. Like the only thing maximum total HP is good for is if, like, let's say, you know, you had for well, we'll just use my my HP. Like, let's say there is a damaging technique that does 1500 damage. I've only got 1481 HP. So being a Galka, I would probably have about 30 more HP than I do right now at the expense of some MP. And that's the only time like that. that's the only situation that really high total HP comes in handy is, is when there's a hit so big that you can't live through it. Right? And, and then the other situation where really high HP comes in handy is if you have no other source of getting more HP, like cheers. Right? You know, like if you're, you know, obviously if you have like 2000 HP and you're fighting something and you're not getting any cheers from any source or anything, you're going to be better off than if you fought the same thing, the same situation with less total HP. But this is a game where cures always matter extremely, like they're extremely important. You don't want to be fighting anything serious without them, and so you're gonna have you're gonna have them and you're gonna want them. And Taru Taru's paladins, like, you know, they have like a hundred and something more MP than any other race on paladin. So like, sure they're not hitting as hard, and sure they don't have as much vitality, and sure they don't have as much HP, but like. Yeah, they get like a whole nother cure four before they need to rest. Like, which is effectively more HP than the racial HP difference. And alternatively, they have more more MP to just flash more to, to pull more monsters in a row before needing to rest. It's a very very appropriate tanking choice, if you ask me. If you were going to try to racially specialize. Okay, so go to Ottawa Chasm. Make your way to the eastern portion of the map towards the Paradmore Tor Mountain. It should be simple enough, generally going east of the tunnel. Then go around Paradmore Tor on the north side to the east side. And make your way to the middle of the intersection of L8 and K8 to reach Loose Sand. Be ready to run up the mountain once you pick up the Loose Sand after killing the notorious monster. Okay, so we, we actually have the map. And see, this map is kind of confusing. Uh, I... The first time I ever had this map, I think, was after Abyssia came out. Um, you could get... I think you could get the map for this zone in Abyssia, Ottawa. Because one of the Abyssia zones, and I believe the second Abyssia add-on, was Abyssia, Ottawa. And... Um, Chainsaw Mathia has you come here a few times, but once it, it's kind of like Carpenter's Landing. You don't come here, you know, a super ton, which is kind of a shame because it's a really cool zone, actually. 
And, uh, the, uh, <sighs> come on, brain, work with me. The Abyssia version of it has a lot going on, uh, especially during the Abyssia era. But even still nowadays, because people are always making Empyrean weapons. Um, and, uh, in Abyssia, you have to cr climb Paradmor, Tor, just to kill one of the notorious monsters you need to kill to uh, finish the Abyssia storyline. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's the whole thing. But uh, this is where it starts, in, in the actual Idol Chasm. And uh, people never really EXP'd here either. It was one of these places that's so far out there without easy access back in the day. And I don't know exactly what the level range of monsters here is, but we got these new antlion monsters. These were new to Chains of Promathia. Uh, you can learn the Blue Mage spell from the man Mandible Bite, or Mandibular Bite. And uh, I still don't have that spell, I don't think, because I didn't come out here at all until now. I could have. I could have just come out here off screen. But I was afraid of getting cuts, possible cutscenes. We got to go to L8 or something. So, like... I think we want to actually run around the outside. Uh, some interesting things about this area. I think it's on the, the western side. Uh, near Kabuka's Claw or whatever. But there's like... Cracks and stuff where this miasma comes out of the ground everywhere. And it can block your path. Um, including on Paradamor Tour. But also, the red great worm Tiamat spawns here. It's a level 95 great worm, or grand worm, that's uh, basically a fire version of Nidhogg. Uh, and also does the thing that great worms do uh, as introduced by Chains of Promathia. Oh, looks like I was, I was wrong. I need to run through the. Uh, either around the north or go through the maze here. But great, great Worms, as we'll find out one of the missions that we have to do for Chains of Promathia to introduce you to the concept so you're ready for it later with the harder versions of the dragons, they can fly. They, they take off. They, uh, they will fight you while flying. And while they're flying, if I remember right, they're immune to melee attacks. You cannot hit them with melee. You can only hit them with ranged attacks and magic. And... They eventually land, but every time they land, they deal intense AoE damage. And then also... Um, let's see. Be ready to fight Little Mare. Um, Tiamat is like a... There's several other Grand, grand Worms. Uh, notorious monsters from Chance of Promathia. There's Virtra, which is like an undead one that's in King Rampair's tomb. Uh, I don't think Virtra flies, but Virtra's like one of the strongest of them because Virtra's a beast master. Can charm players and also like summons undead monsters to fight while also being in a room full of undead monsters already. It was a very, very painful uh, rough customer. Uh, then there's Jormungandr, which is the ice dragon that's on Eula Garande range, which I probably mentioned in the video I, I did where I was there learning blue magic. These grand worms, they all give titles and drop very specific gear pieces, which back in the day went for millions just because of how rare they were. But for the most part, aren't really that great. Like, Tiamat drops some Monk Ninja Samurai Kotes that are red, called like the Noritsune Kote or whatever. And they are like plus 10 accuracy. Which I guess before Tracers of Otergon came out and accuracy and sushi came out and stuff, accuracy 
so I guess early 2004, mid 2004, whatever. Accuracy was like, you know, at a premium, like you wanted accuracy. But like, there's other options that are similar, that have a little less accuracy. And with how hard they are to get, you know, they're not only for three jobs and whatnot, so whatever. But also, the, the more important drop that Tiamat drops that everyone was going Goo Goo Gaga for is the Herald Skaters, which are these boots that have plus 12% movement speed. And I think White Mage, Black Mage, Summoner, and Bard can equip them. Possibly Geomancer now as well. What the hell's a Bane Lizard? Okay. Doesn't matter too much, I guess. Um... K9, we're at K9. Said, what did it say again? L8 and K8. Okay. We're looking for loose sand. We're at K9 still. But yeah, you, you can see how little help the map is actually giving us. And the sad thing is, this miasma, it randomly drops or whatever. Like, it, it, it doesn't always impede your path. I don't think, but there's always, like, at, at least on ground level, there's always a way around it. You don't have to wait on it. Always, anyway. Sometimes you do. On Pradmore Tour, I'm pretty sure you do at some, some point. Because there's only one correct path to go up Pradmore Tour. And I don't know how long this miasma takes to go down, and it's really a bitch for recording this. Perhaps I should look it up. Let's see, I'm gonna look up Ottawa Chasm here. Hubba doo doo. Ottawa Chasm. Ottawa, meaning arid in ancient Mithrin, is the name of the chasm that traverses the eastern part of Araganu. As the name suggests, very little rain falls here, resulting in a parched, broken land where poisonous gas erupts from cracks in the earth. However, many unique forms of life have adapted to this harsh environment, ranging from ant lions that forage for prey hiding underground to the beautiful yet deadly Gasponia flowers that feed on noxious fumes. Until recent, oh yeah, there's a part, there's a part of this where when you run through it at a certain time, the Gasponia flowers are like in bloom or whatever, you get poisons and like you take poison damage just by being in the zone. I forgot about that. Um, da -da 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 -da. Until recently, several forbidden cliffs had to be scaled in order to reach Ottawa Chasm. But due to the discovery of an underground route by a mountaineer, it is now possible for adventurers to travel to this inhospitable area with relative ease. According to Mithrin folklore, Paradamo Tour, I've been saying it wrong this whole time, a hill said to be found somewhere beyond the chasm and was never heard from again. Okay, so basically it's supposed to be a super deadly place that'll super kill you. Oh yeah, sure, I'll go in water, why not? I don't know if this miasma is actually going to go down. I might have to run back around from the northern side. So, let's see. Notes. Miasmal counter agent will temporarily disperse the miasmas. Oh, how does that work? Gaseous substance that acts to temporarily disperse miasmas. Disperses miasmas in Ottawa Chasm and Abyssia Ottawa. Made with alchemy level 1 with a seashell, salinator, and a distilled water. Oh, that's interesting. Used in the quest Hazy Prospects. Well, they probably intend for you to make that rather than wait for them to go down. I assume you just like run up on it and use it near them, or maybe there's some of these are targetable. I don't really know. I do know I'm I'm kind of annoyed. Uh, I was close to the uh, close to the stuff. 
I don't really remember the Miasma being here, um, blocking my way for this mission. Of course, it's been years since I did this mission on any character. I remember the second time I did this mission on my second character or whatever, uh, I, uh, I was bold and triumphant. I just came in here and said, I know the exact way. I remember the exact way. And I just, like, ran the exact way to the exact location where this antlion's at. Killed the antlion, uh, got the sand, ran up Pradmore Tour in two and a half minutes, and moved on with my life. <laughs> but here I am, over an hour into this recording. And I think the last 20 minutes has been me running through the desert, rambling to you. Okay. I wish I could say it's like riding a bike and it would all come back to me. Unfortunately, it does not seem to be like riding a bike. Now, it said K8 and L8 boundary. And L is farther east than we had gone yet. So, we're going to have to, like, get to this maze and go around these rocks, I guess. <sighs> Yeah, I would. If the miasmal counter agent was actually required, I would totally already have it. But I've literally never heard of it till now. Like I've never looked up this zone to, to like look for a faster way to go through it. I've always just gone through it and 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 walked around the miasmas or waited for them to disappear. Which. Uh, is kind of sending me right now in, in the bad way. Like, we still need to go farther east. And all I can think is this, 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 like, I'm going to have to walk, run all the way back around. I should have gone back to the pass and got some sprinter shoes for this or something. Th that might actually still be a good idea, just come back. So I'm gonna have to run run back around all the way anyway. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't see a lot of info on it. I guess I could try looking at the other wiki. Yeah, okay. Yeah, everything in this half of, of Adewa Chasm is like, I don't know, mid-40s or something. That's why it's all too weak to be worthwhile. But in the western side, you can find, like, courses and stuff. And I think the western side is also where the poison plants I'm thinking of are. Um, which poison you as you run through the zone. I remember being told that I had to run through the zone during the daytime to go to the mission point. Because I would blood aggro the courses... Which are basically lich, you know, they're like level 68 black mages. And there's also a notorious monster one that spawns in here that drops like, I think it's the harpy knife and a couple of other um, things for like beastmaster. I remember a lot of beastmasters wanting to kill that notorious monster, partially because of what it dropped, but also partially because they could. Like beastmaster is one of those jobs that's incredibly powerful if you have like a good charm set and know what you're doing you just go to his own and like you go find the strongest monster you can charm and you charm it and if your charm succeeds you use um familiar your two hour and this forces any monster you've charmed no matter how much level difference they have between you and them uh it forces them to be your pet for 30 minutes minimum and theoretically you could keep them on a leash even longer than 30 minutes it's just that after 30 minutes is over their duration of your charm actually kicks in and like 
if it was going to be like a one minute duration or whatever, then you get an extra minute. And if it was going to be a three minute duration, then you get the three extra minutes or whatever. But more or less, you know, be standard Beastmaster procedure is just grab toughest, incredibly tough or very tough monster you can with the charm. Uh, which, like, your charm has a pretty high chance to fail for anything that high level. But like you, you with a good charm, enough charm plus pieces on, and enough charisma, you you will c succeed eventually. And once the charm sticks, you just hit familiar, bam! You've got a pet that's strong enough to kill anything, its level or lower. And usually, uh, like in certain some zones, that means that a lot of notorious monsters you can fight, you can just make the monster kill them. Uh, and use, like, reward, I think, to heal it. But also, the other tactic you can do with Beastmaster is never engage the enemy yourself, only engage it with your pet. And you can throw weak monsters at a notorious monster over and over again with charm. And if they only last for, like, you know, a minute or two against the monster, oh well, they do a little bit of damage. And basically, you just go and grab another one and it's all groovy. Okay, let's see. I don't know the way to Brad Motor, and we're at K8, and almost at the K8 L8 border, right? So we're just looking for the loose sand now. And then we get to try to climb the mountain in time. Is that, is that it? Loose sand. Okay, loose sand. There we go. Awesome. All my buffs are about to wear off, but they don't really matter. You must move a little closer to examine the area. You must move a little bit closer so you can get hit by the ant lion. There you go. Pit ambush! Oh, Leo Mir! Oh, oh, oh. Amazing. Finally, some action! Alright, my friend, you're paralyzed. The paralysis that works on Sky Gods. So it better be proccing on you. Okay, so what happens when I kill this thing? On the eastern side of the mountain, it's located for trees, checking the target will spawn an antlion in him named Leomir. Oh, there's the blue mage spell, but we're not on blue mage. Okay. Uh huh. Okay, so we killed him. Check the loose sand again to get the key item, Mimeo Jewel. Next, you'll need to climb the intricate, the intricate mountain Paradmore Tour. Uh, from Matame the Mimeo Jewel, you have 30 minutes Earth time to reach Cradle of Rebirth, target on the Tour Summit before the Mimeo Jewel breaks. You will be warned at various intervals of the Mimeo Jewel's status. Uh, you will have time to receive a uh, message. If the Jewel breaks, you have to return to Lucent to obtain it again. Uh, do not disconnect or zone for any reason. You will lose the key item and have to return to loose sand to get it again. Uh, using a mount will also break the jewel. Apparently you can, we can use mounts in here. Um, you will not need to fight the mimi... The, okay, so we got a little video here. The starting point for the climb is located at the northwest corner of K9. Northwest corner of K9. Okay, so we're actually... We were supposed to take a right after. Okay, so I guess it would make sense for them to put the notorious monster that you gotta carry this jewel up there with. And for some reason, I remember having less time to do this back in the day. It says 30 minutes on this wiki, but I remember like it being just a few minutes. Like maybe it wasn't quite as restrictive as I'm thinking, but like I remember having trouble like on my first go of this way back in the day. Uh, 
From the loose sand, hug the right wall and keep following it southwest until you reach an opening and follow it south until you see a narrow pass on this wall. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay. Uh, look closely at the mountain wall because it's very inconspicuous and does not seem like a normal walking path in Final Fantasy XI. And here it is. I think, anyway. Yeah. Okay, so what's this little video? Because we got, we got this video of someone climbing it on YouTube, and they got, like, music going. Which I don't really care to hear, but I will full screen them. Okay, and they're doing this during the daytime. Alright. Are we taking a left or a right now, buddy? They look like a ninja with an optical hat and a scorpion harness. Okay, now we gotta, like, go back up this winding path. There's a miasma there. Are they just running by miasma? Uh, we gotta wait for this miasma to go down then. Oh, okay, nice. Okay. Hold on there, guy. I'm... 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 Failing to keep up. You can fall off this this path, by the way. Okay, so we run around this way. Around this way again. There's another miasma. He's got a miasma too. And he says we're walking down and falling. And then we walk and fall again and run back up. And there's another miasma. And he says, fall down. And be careful. And hug, 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 hug. And we're gonna get to a bone. Yeah, another thin path. And, and I say, hey, hey, thin path, stop being a bitch. I am falling behind this dude. Come on now. Yeah, back in the day, people used to be, be bragging about doing this without a guide. Can we fall? We hug. There's miasma again. We wait for the miasma. Okay, dude. Hold on, hold on, hold on there, dude. I gotta wait on this miasma longer than you did. Okay. Run, 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 run. We fall. Did he fall twice? I gotta rewind the video, I guess. Run, we run, we fall, right? I hope you fell. Okay, we fall on this crack. Right now. And we go. His music choice for this is interesting. I'd let you hear it, but uh, maybe I'll link the Paradmore Tour guide video in the description after I upload, or as I upload. It's kind of funny, when I used to climb this back in the day, I could always tell when I was going the wrong way. Because, like, eventually you just hit a point where the path ends, and if you keep going, you just fall straight off the mountain. And motherfucker, he, he had another miasma not get, not get in his way. Okay, dude, we're, we're pausing this. Come on now. Or did, did he just jump down before the miasma? Oh, okay, he just... There's a little path down here, okay. And see, climbing this thing is, is not exactly straightforward, right? Because you have to fall so much. You actually have to go down to go up. And it's really easy to fall off the path, dude. Like, right now, one, like, little twing on my... Um, 
on my joystick to the right and I will fall off the path. It's a little bit better on the bone bridges. I think he's gonna go up this way. I actually got ahead of the guy in the video. Because he was like desperately going slowly trying not to fall I guess. I actually think this would be kind of harder to do on um, that keyboard mouse. Don't actually know though. Never played this game with a keyboard and mouse. I mean, I have a keyboard for talking to people. But uh, did he just go through the miasma there, or did he? Okay, so he went up into the left, right? And let me guess, he doesn't even have a miasma in his way. You lucky son of a bitch! But I, I know for a fact that's the way you're going because I see the bone, the bones. That was kind of like a general good rule of thumb to me. It's like you know you're on the right path when you see all the bones. Because the right path for this has tons of bones. But uh, the wrong path has a few bones too. So like that's one of the reasons you might have trouble. I think we're... I want to say we're, uh, yeah, we're almost there. And he just gets to go through the miasma almost every time. There's only been a few miasmas where he actually has to stop. What the fuck is this guy's luck? Maybe maybe they dissipate easier in the daytime or something. Yo, let me through the miasma. Okay, I think I think we're pretty much there. I think we just have to go straight forward. Well, not exactly straight. But oh, oh, oh. Man, is there a geomagnetic fountain up here? That's useful. That's useful. We never have to climb Paratamar Tour ever again. Because we can just warp out here now with the, uh, the Adulin... The Adulin thing. I don't know if that's going to be useful later in Chains of Promathia. But... Look at that, man. That's like... Earth crystals or something? And I think we cast our jewel into it. I never looked down there back in the day. I never thought to. Okay, so we got all the Mimeo feathers now. Sweet. I guess we go back to Yorin Warren. Turn to Winter's Walls and talk to Yorn Orin. Okay, can do. Can do. Also, I'm just gonna use my each shad ring out of habit because it has infinite charges. Like, there's no reason not to keep uh, it up as long as we need XP. And the other thing about it is, you know, it's got a two-hour recharge time on it. That's its real limiter. And I'm not exactly gonna be EXPing on camera, but like, just anything that actually does give us EXP, you know, we might as well get the, as much EXP from it as possible. Turn it, man. That is some loud bass duck music. Okay. Well, that wasn't as painful as I thought it was going to be, but I, to, to be fair, I, I rigidly followed that dude's guide video, so... Maybe I'll post that in the description. Because, uh, uh, yeah, very helpful. If, if I had tried to climb Paratamo Tor without that guide, I probably would have fallen off like three or four times before getting the right path.
And you could see that even on the right path, there were still branches on the path that for, for you to accidentally take and fall off. And some of them actually went on for quite a while. I remember one of the wrong paths you can get on that seems like you're going to be on the right path because you went down, right? And you saw how, how much I had to fall down to go up. Uh, you fall down and it starts looping around Paradmore Tor and you think, oh, any minute now I'll come to a slope that'll take me back up. But it literally just loops around and like only glows up once. And it goes up once to like a spot that's obviously just a drop back down. And so it's like an infinite loop. If you decide to stay on it, because it's, you know, it's the wrong path or whatever. Uh-huh. Find those three troublemakers before I finish repairing the mirror. Okay. Go to Port Windurst and talk to you, Juju. Okay. Home point warp three. I, I love how up to date this guide is on the home point warps. It's just like, here, let, let me save you some time. Just fucking warp. And I gotta be honest, if I liked the Windurst music a little bit better, I probably wouldn't warp. But honestly, the Windurst music to me, I don't know. It's it's kind of playful and I like it, but like, I don't like listening to it for long stretches of time. Like, I could listen to the Bastok theme all day. And even though the bagpipes in Sandioria are really annoying to me, I could also probably listen to them uh, for a decent amount of time. Um, probably not as long as Winter's theme, though, honestly. But they don't grate on me as fast. I mean, I could listen to the Winter's theme longer, but... It, great, it starts to grate on me sooner. Uh, but not as much as this damn Halloween theme. I am so done with this Halloween theme. Like... It was interesting the first time I heard it last year. <laughs> but this year it's been... They put like a pumpkin in all of my favorite music zones. Like they put a pumpkin in Zeta. They put a pumpkin in Eastern Adolin. They put a pumpkin... You know... In like several other places where I want to hear the zone music. But I'm forced to listen to this stupid fucking, um, pumpkin nonsense. Okay, so where is she at? M6. Okay, so the airship. The airship. Yeah, th that's where they were going. That's where they were giving money to take the airship. But they don't, they don't have an airship license, I don't think, so I don't see how they're going to get on the airship. I, I wouldn't think that he actually gave them 500,000 gil. Oh, that is loud and grating. I hope you can hear me, that's fucking ridiculously loud. I mean, I've had accordion going on there. Hey, there's a dude named Wint. A girl named Wynn, with an E on the end. Hey, honey baby. Tell me things. You look like my ex. But you've got my last name. Uh. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Extra, extra, hear all about it. Magic Paradise Weekly is chock a block full of the latest news of the Winders. The next special feature is. Yay. Huh? Three Taro Taro wearing clothing from another country? How come you know all about Taro, our next special feature? If you're looking for them, they were just sitting on top of the air travel agency, sighing as they watched the airships come and go. Oh, thank god the quest stopped the pumpkin music. For sad music. Chris is never lazy with her punishments, either. Nope, she definitely doesn't hold back. She really gets ugly, that's for sure. You know, I've been thinking. I don't think that guy was our father. Nah, not our dad. Nope, not our daddy. Our father would be someone a lot more powerful. 
Yeah, he is our dad after all. Our daddy would have a super duper double whammy extra wizzy wizard. Father, dad, daddy! So are they gonna go back to Yorin Orin or are they gonna go to Koru Moru? For a super duper double whammy extra wizzy wizard. Okay, so. Go to Winter's Waters, home point one, talk to Tosuka Porika. Okay, I guess while we're here, we might step up, well, step up to the residential area and get the uh, Port Winders Tome Point 3. I don't know if we'll need it in the future, but might as well get all the teleportation, since a lot of these guides have been rewritten to account for it. Uh, it is the law of the land now that we teleport everywhere, so. I guess it's not a law. They're not going to, like, ban you if you don't use teleportation. But, uh... I've I've spoken my my piece on it before, right? Is he in Winter's Walls or Waters? Waters, one point one. Okay. So kind of where this little quest chain started, we zoned into Winter's Waters and saw the Chibukis walk in. Of course, that was in a video from last year, randomly, when I didn't want it to be to be there, or whatever. Uh, fortunately, my mind is a steel trap. And I have a really good memory, even though it's not photographic. I often wonder what a photographic memory would be like. Um, a guy I knew in the Navy had a photographic memory, but he didn't he didn't like to call it that. He, he, he didn't like to say it was eidetic. He didn't like to say it was uh, G8. Oh, I'm at F8. Okay, I'm in the wrong side of the building. I asked him, how, you know, how do you remember so much from the notes and stuff? And he's like, well, I just picture the notes in my mind, and they come, they come, the picture of the notes comes into my mind exactly how they were when they were given to us. It's like, so you have a photographic memory. He's like, no, oh, it's just a really good memory. And I was like, yeah, so a photographic memory. <laughs> like, because yeah. this dude, he was making a perfect grade in nuke school. And, like, you got to be bright to do that. But, literally, a lot of the tests are just put this exact statement from the notes that we gave you in, in as the answer. And he was smart enough to piece together what answers they wanted. And since he could just remember and recite the notes from memory, like, he could just put them down. And he never needed study. And he had a 4.0 GPA for, like, the entirety of nuke school. Or almost, anyway. It wasn't quite perfect. He, he, he got a few questions, like... Ex like the essay questions, where you had to explain it in your own words. He, he got countered off on some of those. That's about it. His name was, like, Finzel. He's really tall from, like, the Northeast, like New Jersey or New York or something. Uh... He was really a party hound, too. A beer hound. He liked to go out. He liked to get girls. He had a lot of charisma. And sorry I haven't been reading Tosuka Parika, but... Uh, he's giving us Kara Bahura lore, and these guys th thought that he was their daddy. Powerful at all, Grandpa. You don't look rich either, Grandpappy. I am known as the Fountain of Knowledge. Oh, he's talking about Magnificent Memory, too. How about that? Go ahead, ask me anything you wish to know. Okay, who are the Kulu? The Kulu were an ancient race that no longer exists in our time. What about the Zillart? That is also the name of an ancient race that no longer exists in our time. How about Bahamut? That would be the name of the ancient king of worms that no longer exists in our time. Amazing! You managed to get every question wrong! What? What are you talking about? One more question. Who is Nagmalata? Nagmalata? Hmm. Isn't the name of a Juno 
Ombudsman Diplomat? I believe he was responsible for adjudicating talks between the three nations during the time of war. Wow, I knew he was somebody important. He's important, powerful, and rich. He could have been our daddy if he were a Tarutaru. Taru. I'm gonna head to Juno now, Grandfather. Head for Juno! Juno! They barely scraped the lore at all. There's like... Uh, remember, we're still related to Chains of Promathia. <laughs> He's freaking out. He's like, no, 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 no. My studies can't be wrong. As if, you know, academic knowledge is 100% is true because, you, you know, someone wrote a book about it. Pro tip, all knowledge contained in books came out of the heads of people. Not saying books are worthless, just saying books can be flawed. So now we go back to Yorin Orin, right, 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 right? Yep, okay. Alrighty then. Come along, quest line. Really hope Comcast doesn't suddenly decide to dick me down and knock my connection out as we're getting close to the end of this chapter. Although I suppose it wouldn't be the end of the world, I would just stop and come back to it. Oh look, Galkas. Are they actual players, or are they mules? Okay, they have... They have Sparks gear, but no Sparks weapon. And no subjobs. But one of them's got a subjob. What, what is this? Okay, they're all doing Chancen from Mathia to get access to something. Probably for making Gil, and they're all bot being botted right now. To go through this. That's interesting. Heard the mirror. Okay. They already left. What about this matter of questionable parentage? They were the children of Karaha Baraha. Allied expedition to the Northlands, eh? Since you assisted me with the recent crisis, I suppose I can tell you what I know. I must warn you, though, that precious little was discovered. The expedition mostly served to prove the evil of the Northlands when two of the musketeers from the Bastokan contingent failed to return. The terrible power in that land has been whispered about for many years, but I do not believe that anyone has yet managed to discern what or where that power truly is. And since we've already done our nation missions and fought the Shadow Lord, we know exactly what actually happened to that Northlands contingent already. But we're, like, asking questions as if we haven't done that. Because this is a separate storyline. Final Fantasy XI likes to keep its storylines separate, but equal. It was the suspicious actions of Bastok that interfered with the original expedition. Take your questions to Bastok or Sandoria, in case you haven't done the Sandorian. Uh, thing. So now, to complete this chapter, we go and talk to Sid, which is why during the WSNMs he was constantly mentioning this. It's because he is part of this chapter for this quest line, so he has an a, a quest activation flag on him currently for us, but we haven't fulfilled the requisites for him to give us the cutscene. So, is that person, they're wearing a goblin outfit? They look retarded. That might look cute on a Taro Taro or something. Ugh. Okay, we want number one closer to the president's office because it's on the second floor.
There's actually a few trusts we can pick up here, I think, which, depending on how long this next cutscene is, um, I might do the beginning of next episode or something. I love the Metalworks music, too. Basswork has such great themes. Alright, Sid, my boy. How about you use your giant chompers to tell me about the Northlands expedition? Oh dear god, those chompers. Was there? No, everybody that went on that damn mission passed away or was... I usually don't believe in anything crazy like magic or curses, but after hearing the story about what happened up there in the Northlands, I don't think there may be any other explanation. You already heard from the other two nations that the expedition was formed on the suggestion of the Republic, right? <sighs> Maybe it's time that I face up to my past crimes. I was the one that pressured the government into sending a party to the Northlands. Thirty years ago, a man brought a strange stone to the metalworks. It wasn't any bigger than my fist, but just by standing near it, you could feel the power flowing from its facets. The power was greater than that of any crystal I had ever seen. I was shocked and amazed by what lay before my eyes. And this is the Graviton theme from Rise of Zillard. When the man told me that it was a fragment of a crystal that was found in the Northlands, I was convinced that something more was hiding up there. I thought if I could find that energy source and bring it back to Bastok, the Republic would thrive ultimately becoming the strongest, most advanced nation in the world. So I told my discovery to the president at the time and suggested that he ready an expedition led by a party of musketeers. It was supposed to be top secret, but somehow the information leaked to the other two nations and... And in the end, the expedition turned up nothing, and we lost more than we could have ever imagined. Now that I think of it, the energy from that stone might have been enough to power the crystal propulsion unit. Could Juno have already found a new source of energy in the Northlands? God, his teeth, man. <laughs> his teeth are actually moving with every, every time. Like, this is, you know, early... Early mouth movement animations. Oh, man. <laughs> if only I had that rock. Unfortunately, it disappeared 30 years ago, right around the time of the expedition. The man who told, sold me the stone, a stone which he called Magicite, so that he brought it from Tavnesia, and that it was a piece of a larger gem known as the Star of Tavnesia. Maybe that crazy blue-haired girl from the island knows something about that gem. Her hair is more of a lavender, dude. Do you think you could ask her for me? Okay, I thought that would be the end of the chapter. You may have to talk to him twice. Okay, uh, so does that did that actually complete the chapter for us? Like, where do we tending age-old wounds? Yeah, okay, so we're yeah we're on the next chapter. Uh, let's see, we're already at an hour forty-five minutes though. So let me see where the next chapter starts. Zone into Lower Juno to get a cutscene. Go to Lower Juno 1.2 and expect the door at the Tinchetto headquarters to receive the final cutscene of this mission. Uh, okay. So we'll go to Lower Juno. Just because we can. Uh, it's not that hard to teleport there. And, uh, see the text for Chapter 4 pop up. Helga, I wish I could get her as a trust. I think she's supposed to be the leader of the um, Golden Musketeers or whatever, which never have any storylines revolve around them. And you never meet their members either, as far as I am aware. If you talk to her, though, she just mentions it. I'm the leader of the Golden Musketeers. Blah, blah, blah. The Ducal Guard and Nagmalata again. Uh oh, it's evil calm wind. No, I'm just kidding, it's just Wolfgang. Sarah, the airships are ready for departure. Well, I will be traveling on a separate vessel. If he appears before I arrive, prevent him from escaping, but do not attack. Yes, sir.
is all working as planned. Now I will finally retrieve what is mine. Hmm. Vague. Okay. Still haven't gotten the chapter four pop up though. Like, how are we on chapter four, but like not like actually on chapter four yet? Okay, so says we gotta go to. I guess, I guess yeah, Prish is hiding out with Aldo, right? I kind of forgot where she was at. This is what I get for putting this off for like a year. It's just past the auction house, isn't it? Neptune Spire. Yep. 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 Ah, calm wind. Just the man I wanted to see. Oh, Almia's already here. A young lady claiming to be Prisha's acquaintance is here. Mm hmm. Yep, looking for her as well. You wish to know more of the Magicite gem that a peddler from Tabnasia sold to Bastok over 30 years ago. I do recall hearing stories of the Star of Tabnasia. Unfortunately, I never actually set my eyes upon it. I do not know what it is, or if the Magicite was a piece of it. Magicite, the Star of Tephnasia. Sir Aldo, you would not happen to know anything of the gem, would you? I've heard stories of a mysterious gem kept in the Tephnasian Cathedral. But that relic is also a Magicite. I wonder if the, what way it's connected with the other Magicite found around Vanadiel. Deep within the Orc, Quadov, and Yakuto strongholds, there are doors that the beastmen guard with their lives. Beyond those doors lie giant crystals emitting a strange, eerie light. If the beastmen were drawn to those crystals and chose areas to build their towns, then the Magicite in the Northlands is more than likely... Hmm. Well, there is a beastman stronghold there. Leader, the girl, she's been taken to Dr. Mompiros. What? What happened? It seems she was attacked while visiting the Temple of the Goddess. Attacked? Prish! So, we didn't even have to actually go all the way in there. We still haven't gotten the Chapter 4 text to pop up. So, we will go to Mom Bureau's clinic, but we are almost at like the two hour hard limit for my recordings. Oh dear. Oh, and we got fucking... Well, maybe we're not actually in Chapter 4 yet. Maybe this is... Okay, 3 tech, 3 tech 4, 3 tech 5, or whatever. Point right next to Mombiro's clinic. I guess it's just for this. Huh. Alright, my man, tell me about Prish and do it in less than 11 minutes. is quite unstable. Seems she is suffering terribly. See, her hair is lavender. It's not blue. Wait, you are. What's Tenzin doing here? Oh, he brought Prish here. Keeper. Prish? Of the Apocalypse. Nope, his katana's going off. 
calling me. Stop! Get away! N no! Our amulet! It, it's gone! Did, did you not see the amulet about my dear friend's neck? Without it, she... I apologize, miss, but by the time I had found her, she was without this amulet of which you speak. Impossible! Wait, calm when. Could you show me your amulet? I feel like the two may be connected in some way. Please, it may be the only way we can save Prish. The patient's condition has stabilized. However, she shows no signs of waking from the deep sleep which she has fallen. In all my use as a doctor, I've never seen anything like this. Come when, do you truly feel that this all has some connection to that amulet? If only the mysterious boy who dropped it was still here, he might help us shed some light on that predicament which would have... Blah, 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 in which we find ourselves. Boy, do you not mean the same boy from the Ducal Guard is searching for, do you? What is this? Have you also heard the rumors of the strange young man who disappeared days ago? <laughs> According to the storyline, it's been—it's only been a few days. She gave the amulet to Prish after she had been badly injured in an accident. She said it was to protect her. Ever since that day, she's not been without the amulet. But why would anyone wish to steal it? Perhaps it was the boy who stole the patient's amulet. However, just days ago, I heard that the boy was recently spotted in the ruins of Sokstja, located deep within the dreaded Northlands. What, are you positive? A soldier I treated for hypothermia mentioned that his party had seen him alone in the ruins. When the Ducal Guard learned of this, they set out for the Northlands at once. So the fourth crystal lies in the ruins of Zoxia. I have no time to lose. Wait! Before you set off on this journey, I must inform you that the ruins are controlled by an organization known as the Tinchodo. You should probably consult with them first. I see. Thank you for this information. Good day, Doctor! Okay, so we talked to Mom Bureau. Um, and, uh... We have to do something else now. But, uh... It's not telling me about getting permission from the Tenchoto yet. So, I guess we'll leave off there because we're almost at the two hour hard limit. So, thanks for watching. Stay safe and have a nice day. And oh my god, the pumpkin music stopped. We're back to normal Juno music. It's a miracle. But, uh, yeah. Stay safe and have a great day, and I'll see you again.